Hello guys, my name is B. Jamin, the publisher of HowExpert.com, where we publish short how-to guides on unique topics by everyday experts. And we have a very special guest today, an expert author. His name is John Zakour, and he's the author of the book, How to Write Comic Strips, a quick guide on writing funny gags and comic strips. And John Zakour has a very impressive resume. I want to read that bio and, and show what he has accomplished before we get started in the interview. Okay, John, basically, he has his own comic strip. Okay, he founded one of the uh, very famous comic strip. It's uh, John Curry writes his own syndicated comics called Working Days and Maria's Days for Universal Press. Um, Working Days appears in papers all over the world you know, well in the United States, Scotland, Canada, and Taiwan, and has a regular web following with over 50,000 readers. John is has written seven humorous um, sci-fi novels for Daw Books, um, a lot of uh, youth adult books, four humorous self-help books, and three books on HTML. Very multi-talented. John has also option two TV shows and three movies. In the 80s and 90s, John was a computer programmer and web guru for Cornell University. For fun, John lifts weights and plays pickleball and World of Warcraft, wow. And uh, I do wanna share, uh, show you guys uh, uh, some proof here. One second, guys, bear with me as I change my computer screen for, for a second. Okay, there you go. This is the book he wrote, How to Write Comic Strips, a quick guide on writing funny gags in comic strip panels because he has real life experience doing this in his life, okay? Um, you can go check out, check out the book, ebook, paperback book, and future audiobook in the future on Amazon. Just type How to Write Comic Strips. On top of that, he has multiple books that he wrote. Um, he wrote for uh, several different books with different projects, as you can see here. You, I'll put the link below the video if you are interested in other books that John wrote. Uh, what's really unique about him is he wrote a comic that has his own Wikipedia page. I don't know any other person who has his own Wikipedia page, so that's really impressive. Working Days is a comic strip written by John Zakor, as you can see right here, Wikipedia page. So not everyone has their own Wikipedia page. This is uh, This is a very... A popular comic strip written by John Zakori, as you can see here, and has a lot of information here. So it's an honor for you to be here on the interview. Welcome, John. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing great. So in your own words, what is How to Write Comic Strips about and who is it for? It's a fun and useful and guide to help anybody who wants to write a comic strip, which I think almost anybody can do if you have any sense of humor whatsoever. Cool, cool, cool. Let's, uh, let's, uh, so anybody who's just wants to write a comic strip, whether it's for fun or profession, anybody, right? Pretty much. That's true. Yeah. And I think uh, there's a lot of people who want to scratch that comic itch. Let me, let me ask you this. How did you first get started in comic strips? Like, can you go back and tell sure. us like how you got into that field? Sure. I, I grew up reading Peanuts. I always loved reading Peanuts because I thought it was, you know, the most fantastic comic ever. So I always wanted to grow up to be a cartoonist. But my problem was I don't draw at what very age, well. At what age did you discover this? Probably eight. Wow. Okay. Eight or nine. So even in high school, I did little doodles for the high school newspaper that were terrible. And Pretty much everything I drew was terrible. So I thought, so I thought, okay, I write pretty well, but my drawing isn't that great. So uh, one day, this many years later, this is right after out of college. I'm walking along. I'm at the mall. I find this book about how to write gags by Mort Gerber, and then I realized that oh, you don't have to be able to draw to write comics. That a lot of cartoonists will actually pay you to write their strips and so i thought oh this is really cool so what i did was i went home i was still living with my parents because i was poor and kind of unemployed uh well i had just started working for cornell actually but still not making a lot of money so i brought up a bunch of peanuts gags and i sent them off to charles schultz who was the creator of peanuts wow. um, i didn't hear anything for a month just curious, at what age did you submit that 
I was like 19, and I'm into some 19 or you know 20 year year old kid or 21. I forgot. Right after I got out of college, and I'm just this young kid. I'm still living at home, and I actually wrote Charles Schultz and say, "Let me take over peanuts for you. Here are some good gags for you." I wrote, and then I didn't think he would ever respond. And then one day, I'm sitting at home with my sister, and she picks up the phone. And she goes, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Zakor is not here, because she never thinks of me. And then she starts taking down this message, Charles, C-H-A-R-L-E-S. And she says, Schultz. And I go, holy crap. I might have said a different word than crap. That's for me. And so I ran, I grabbed the phone from her. I And then there was Charles Schultz on the other side of the phone. And he basically talked to me about cartooning. And he said, yeah, your material is really good. I like it. You have a lot of potential, but you won't ever write peanuts and nobody ever will write peanuts or draw because it's going to die with me. So that was it. Wow. Yeah. The yeah, guy who created peanuts, his name, he contacted you. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was stupid enough to send him a letter saying, let me write peanuts for you. That's incredible story right there. Like, yeah, I, I, wow. I had written gags for other people by that point. So it, he wasn't the first person I got that. So I had to build up a little bit of a, you know, street cred amongst gag writers. But right. still, I was only like, I was still a kid. And to say, Charles, when you retire, why don't you give peanuts to me? That was really kind of an egotistical, dumb kid thing to do. But he was very nice. He was a very good guy about it. But he took the time to respond to you, and he yeah. saw the potential in you because he was experienced and mature, and he saw yeah. it in you. And that's said, awesome. There you go. Yeah, so so that's when I said, well, yeah, I can really do this. Charles Schultz called me up and said it was good. Other people had bought a bunch of gags from me, so I'm there, okay. Yeah, and I really was just some guy who was a computer programmer with a bunch of minors. But, and I knew I didn't really want to program computers all my life. Uh, and I always wanted to be a cartoonist, but my parents convinced me that you're going to need a fallback job. Which is, you know, good advice because most cartoonists don't make a lot of money and it takes a long time to make money writing cartoons. Right, right. So it's really but, important uh, to have a significant other with a real job. Oh, it's important to still have something backup plan. You still advise yeah. young comic. Yeah, my wife's an Ivy League professor, so that really helps. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. So um, what do you advise new uh, comic strip writers? That's a really interesting point right there. I, I thought just as a layman, um, like you have to be good at both drawing and writing, but you're saying you don't have to be good at both. Whatever you're better at, you can focus on it, right? Yeah, it's amazing if you can do both. And you know, I love the guys that can do both and the gals that can do both, but I'm not one of them. So I thought I could be, but you know, my drawings look really bad. Uh, now, you know, they're, they're not that good. Uh, so what I do is I just concentrate on the writing and that's what I tell people. If you like to write, concentrate on the writing. And there are people you can find out there who will draw them for you. Let for me ask me. you this. In, uh, like, since you're the writer, uh, that's your expertise. Um, how do you, how do you, how do, what's, how do you even get ideas for this? I'm just curious. Like, how do you, I, even get this is, this was talked about in the book. The yes. way I get ideas, one of the ways is I watch TV. And then I hear little words on TV and that gets me off on tangents to write. Uh, but I did an interview with a magazine, a very popular writer's magazine once, is one of the top 10 gag writers in America. It's when I was in Costa Rica and we're talking, everything was going really nice, like, hi, hi, how are you? How's Costa Rica? Really sunny, really nice. And then they go, so how do you get your ideas? I go, I watch TV. And literally I heard click. They hung up on me. They stopped interviewing me. They were just like, oh no, that's a can't be how you generate ideas. But you're saying, uh, most people may assume that's not good, but you're saying TV helps. What do you yeah. watch on TV? What kind of shows do you watch? I watch a really weird array of shows. I mean, I, I love comedy. You know, my favorite shows right now are The Good Place and Bojack Horseman. And both of those are great for generating ideas and spinning off of. What kind of, uh, people may not know those specific shows, but what kind of shows are they? I watch a lot of comedy shows. I, I love comedy. watching comedy shows on both Netflix and some over the air stuff still too. Cause yeah, I like Brooklyn Nine-Nine over the air and The Good Place over the air. So there are some shows on uh, network TV. And then I'll admit it, I actually still like Big Bang Theory. Okay, okay, cool. Might not be a cool thing to admit, but there are times when it's like, yeah, it's mindless. You know, I enjoy mindless TV. You know, there's enough real world stuff to worry about 
where sometimes it's nice to put your mind on hold and just like, oh, this is nice. I'm just being mellow. And somehow when my mind goes on that, let's be on hold, ideas pop into it. That's, that's, that's funny. And then I'll, you know, I have a pad by my, by my, or now I have a phone. And I just type my things in my phone. Or, you know, tell Siri, like, make a note. This could be a funny joke. Very interesting. So for the newbie comic strip writer who's aspiring to be, you know, do what you have accomplished, who's just getting started, has a dream right now. He's watching this. First tip, watch a lot of funny comedy shows right there. First or tip. read a lot of funny comedy, too. You can, you know, there's tons of comics to read online now, and, and Amazon has tons of books. So, yeah, watching and reading comedy is one of the best ways I find to write comedy. Now, as you watch this for the very beginner, how does that help you processing? Like, how does that help you specifically, practically speaking? What do you do? You take I notes? I had some idea how, but I just hear a phrase or words, and I go, oh, I can make a joke out of that. I can spin that into making a joke. I can't remember the last time I did. It was a Space Coast that turned into, I saw I was watching Space Coast, Coast to Coast or something, and I said, oh, he'll be, you know, he can turn invisible. He'll make a really good IT guy. Uh, you know, things like that. Okay, okay. So you, I, I, it's a very organic, very random process. Yeah, very random process for so for the for the beginner. So you get these ideas, and then what's the next step to translate? I write them down. I write them down either on my phone, my iPad, or my computer, whichever is easiest, and then I will grow them from there. Very rarely do I ever write down an idea. The initial idea is the idea I go with. And, you know, it's got a, you know, I say first drafts are like crap. But, for, you know, from the crap, you know, it's really good fertilizer that grows a really nice book or a gag. So you watch the shows, you have your ideas, you write out the big picture idea. Yep. Then what's the next step to actually technically write it as a comic strip, can you teach the newbies out there? I just sit down on the computer uh, and I type it out as a gag. You know, I describe the setting, uh, you know, what the artist needs to see, and then I give the dialogue for each character or any characters who might be on it. Now, for beginners just getting started, specifically with the dialogue and all that stuff, like, like what's a good what's a good structure how to write a basic gag okay this like, varies from you know i've written for a lot of strips they all vary it slightly but they all have the same basic setup you gotta number the panel say what panel it's going to be if there's more than one panel then give a description of what the artist will draw what you're going to see and then underneath you list each character and what they're saying you know, okay. and some people use quotes, some people don't use quotes. And then you use, uh, you know, uh, there's all sorts of asides you can put in if somebody's, if it's a thought balloon or if somebody's angry or shouting and things like that. But, you know, it's all the pretty basic structure. It's something that's easier to read than to talk about. Now, for people just getting started practicing this, how many panels are there? I'm just curious. Like, how many panels do you recommend to just get started practicing this? Because the more you practice, you get better right. at it. It depends if you want to do a single panel or a multi-panel. Uh, I like both. I've actually done working days as both a single panel and a multi-panel. It started off as a straight single panel, but I find you get a lot more versatility and there's a lot more you can do with the multi-panel. So now it's a square, I mean, well, it's a rectangle that usually is the size of a single panel comic in the papers, but we break it up into multiple panels often. But, you know, I try not to make too much work for the artist. No. Let me ask you this though. A lot. Okay, this is another very fascinating topic. You mentioned working days. You 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 created that. Like, let's get into that. How did working days? A lot of artists, a lot of uh, creative writers out there, they have talent. But you made working days successful, or at least you know it's well known. It has its own Wikipedia page. Can you tell us a story beyond that so other people be, can be inspired? How you did it? Sure. I, I say write what you know. I mean, everybody says write what you know, and that's what I was. I was a computer programmer working for this big university, you know, Cornell University, and there was a bunch, there was a whole bunch of diverse people around me, so I actually turned most of them into comic strip characters, and, you know, there, there are exaggerated versions. Some of them are combinations of multiple people, and my lead character, Jay, has a lot of my bad characteristics. I mean, he tends to put his foot in his mouth a lot, and he tends to talk when he shouldn't, and, you know, those type of things. But, you know, he's this guy who was watching all the, 
uh, these higher ups say all sorts of dumb things when he knew, oh, no, this isn't how this works. And, and you know, I have a big mouth and tend to say that. It's like, oh, no, that is wrong. You are totally wrong. That's why I'm much better as a writer than I'm work and would be as an IT guy or a consultant because a lot of people don't like to hear they're wrong, and I shouldn't say that. I'm, I've learned through the years and through maturity not to say, oh, you're wrong. That's a really stupid idea. Uh, but I said that a lot. So that's, that's very interesting. So the big lesson is, uh, as you shared, I mean, working days is well known. You wrote about what you knew. You right. wrote. About I, I perverted it. I, I perverted it. I made it much more outrageous. You know, and I'm a geek. You know, I'm a sci-fi geek, so I had a lot of sci-fi stuff uh, to working days. So there's a lot of people out there uh, uh, aspiring to be comic strip writers, just like you now. Um, they they know they have that idea. A lot of people have the ideas. Now, how did you make that? reach to the newspapers like what did you, did you do first step what's that first step and the next step to get to the newspapers okay you find gotta find an artist when you're just writing so i found uh the, uh, the original artist was andre noel and what we did is we this was in like 94 or i forget but the web was just coming out you know so, and so we actually found a lot of businesses on the web and we sold through them uh, so we, we gained a following through them. So then when I went to United Media at the time before they sold out to Universal, I it already had, you know, following and readership from online. And they took us in, but they also had Dilbert. So we're we've always been Dilbert's uglier, poorer cousin. <laughs> and, and because, you know, we're the single panel birth, you know, so they don't have you know, United Media, they were great, they were really nice, but they really had they didn't have a lot of incentive to sell us when they were selling Dilbert for so so much. That's why we got so few newspapers. We picked up online and got a, you know, we were born online and we kept an online following. So the main step is that you wrote it and then you partnered up with a a, a designer, a, a cartoonist, right. right? And then basically just I uh, emailed it to the editors at uh, United and they decided which to is the publishing company for uh, comic strips and co cartoons yeah United Media back in, yeah they, they did peanuts they did a bunch of things but then now they've you, been you now email them but you had some background at the time you background, yeah and I had tons of rejections from other strips oh yeah uh, you know I, Andre and I the one who started we had we had some really nice rejections back in the 80s with other strips so I had some contact with them but once the email came and then I knew some of the editors. Uh, you know, I just emailed Amy Lago and said, "Hey, you know, do you like this?" And she said, "Actually, I do." And let's run it by other people. So that was nice. And, her, and that's how it reached to massive amounts of people—50,000 people. And that's how it yeah, did. Yeah, at least yeah, more than that online. Yeah, we get a lot. Wow, that's a fascinating story because not everyone has achieved that level. So it's really interesting to learn from a newbie's perspective. Um, um, so where would most people find, for the beginner getting started, where would they find the designers? What do you recommend? Is a natural organic way or a good way to find these designers for people who are good at writing? There's a bunch of artists' websites, and I don't remember their names off the top of my head, but that's the ones I would go to. There's a whole bunch of them uh, where you get comic art. And it, well, back in the pre-web days, before the web was so big, I'd go to Rec Arts Comics. Uh, and I forget where that was. Uh, the The user group or whatever and i could always find artists there but now there's a bunch of different ways to find artists and you know there's things like upworks and freelance.com and they're always you know you can always advertise jobs there tons of hungry writers but you know you're gonna have to pay them where is the number one recommended website for you to meet like-minded people like yourself who are comic book writers and also uh, uh, designers. If you can choose only one website, you recommend a newbie comic strip person. Oh my God, I don't. I feel bad. I don't know the answer to that. No, well, you might not know the website name, but is there like you search for certain things? You may know you've been there before. Well, like, I, they can I, Google I, it. I go to, if you just want to read the comics and see a bunch to learn, is you know, would be comics.com or are you comics.com? Yeah, comics.com is good. That's where you get all the established comics. I'm not up to date. Sorry about this. I'm where that's okay. Google that's okay. Go for that. Yeah, but that's where Google's for. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Google's really good at that. Yeah, but yeah, I, you know, if you want to get ideas, go to comics.com. It's really good for that because there's tons of comics on there, and they're you know all the ar archives from a long time. 
I'm curious, how does a partnership work with a designer? Is it 50-50 usually? That's how it works if you guys go into business together? Yes, for something like, when you do a comic book, it's usually not. The artist gets maybe, the writer usually gets 20% and then the art staff gets the rest of that between inker, letterer, and illustrator and penciler. Uh, but when, when I do my comics, it's usually I split 50-50. Okay, what's the difference between writing comedy for a comic and for a book? I was curious about that. Okay, for a book, it's written word. Uh, for uh, it's written word with no pictures, so you're actually going to need a lot more words. Uh, when you're writing a comic, the art's there to explain it, and so you don't need to be as verbose. And that was one of the tricks I needed to learn that I don't need to explain in the text what the picture's showing. And it took me a long time to get that. And lots of times in my first run through a gag, I will show, you know, my words will say, you know, what people can clearly see with the pictures. And so I have to learn to cut those out. You don't need a lot of words when you, you don't need to explain what the person's looking at when they can see it. Where when you write a book, you actually have to explain, you know, you're setting, you're setting up the whole scene in their head. So you've got to use more words. But comics, no. What's so great about being a comics and funny book writer from your perspective after doing this for many years? I can, I'm sitting here, you don't even know if I'm wearing pants. I, I am, but I, yeah, you know, I don't have to be. I can do, you know, I can do whatever I want. I can get up and walk around. I can take my breaks. I don't have to listen to anybody except my agent, my wife, and my editors. Uh, so it's really nice. I was able to raise my son, so I was always home with him. Uh, that was nice. When we lived in Costa Rica, the guards at the school next to us thought it was really weird that I would stay home, walk my baby and the dog, and why my wife went off and went to work. But then there was a beautiful woman, and one, we lived next to one of the Brazilian or, or the Colombian embassy, I and mean, I'd be walking my baby and the dog, and this beautiful woman would come out every day and just greet us and be so happy to see the, the baby and all that. So the guards actually figured out you know, this Gringo guy, he actually might know something. You know, he might be <laughs> into something. I and the wife go to work, and he stays home with the kids. And, yeah, they, especially in the 80s, they could not understand this guy yeah. stays home and he's writing comics. Um, and then he faxes uh, to people. It's like they, they just thought this was the strangest guy. Right, right, right. Very unique, very, very different. You know, that, okay, the girl actually seems to appreciate this. What would you what would you give uh, some last pieces of advice to the young and aspiring comic strip writer? Um, what would you what's your last pieces of advice to them, or like your younger self who just who has a dream to do this but unsure, still doubtful, maybe fearful a little bit? What would your last pieces of advice be to them? And you're gonna get rejected, but if you like it, if you find it funny, other people will find it funny, and just keep doing it. And you know, like Woody Allen says, the secret of success is show up for work every day. And I really believe in that. I don't, you know, I'm not a fan of Woody Allen, but I'm a fan of that statement that showing up for work, putting in the work, and you will get good at it. Persevere no matter what, right? Right. Yeah, I think that works pretty well for life too. If you show up, put in the work, you know, you'll do well. Why do some people quit as comic strip writers? I mean, you've been sorry, I shouldn't interrupt because there's a ton of rejections. I mean, you get a ton, you know, almost, I, I don't know any writer except maybe Stephen King uh, who's never been rejected. Now, I'm sure Stephen King's been rejected too. Uh, yeah, everybody does. And it's hard, you know, every rejection you get is still like, you know, you pour your soul and heart into this. And then, you know, you, nowadays, you sometimes you don't even get a rejection. You just get it ignored. So you're not even sure if they ever got so said. how do you stay? How did you stay persistent at this? That's that's very fascinating. I really wanted to do it. I really wanted to do this. I you know I you know, I said programming computers and being a web guru was nice, but I felt like it was sucking my. This is when I quit my job to be do this. I feel right. like it's draining my soul. Uh, where when I'm you know I was tired of writing other people's words. I wanted to write my own words, and it, it's nice. I like doing that. It's not making me super rich, but it's making me quite happy and very flexible. I have a flexible life. Do you have what's your future goals now for other people who are curious about who you are? Okay, one of the books go to a movie. That would be really nice. So one of the series of books go to a movie. That would be really good. And yeah, that's about it. I'm actually pretty happy where I'm right now with the comics and with the books. 
Um, you know, I wrote maybe a million words this year. I think about a million words this year. Because to make money with smaller pub publishers now, you almost have to publish a book every three or four weeks. And that's what I've been doing. Right, right. That is that is very impressive. I mean, you have working days. Uh, hopefully, you're one of your uh, uh, books turns into a movie or a TV show or whatnot. Again, guys, if you are interested in the book, How to Write Comic Strips by John, go to Amazon.com, write How to Write Comics, or search for John's Decor. Uh, he also has additional books that he uh, wrote uh, with other sense. authors as well. You can check it out here. There's a whole list. I'll put this link below the video so those of you guys are interested in John's work can go check out his work. Again, John, um, I wish thank you for being on this interview. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and uh, I wish you the best of success. And for those of you guys interested, make sure to click the link below. Check out John's work. Uh, if you did enjoy it, give positive reviews. I appreciate you guys. Talk to you guys soon. Take care, John. Yep, thank you. Bye-bye.